the 2018 UIM F1 H2O World Power Boat Championship came to a thrilling climax in the Grand Prix of Sharjah in the United Arab Emirates as three drivers, all from the same team, fought it out on the Khalid Lagoon to see which one of them would win their first ever World Championship title in F1 H2O. Sharjah is a unique emirate in the UAE with a very different feel to the razzle and dazzle, hustle and bustle of neighboring sheikhdoms. This is a place that puts tradition, heritage and culture foremost on its agenda, a city that reflects the rich Arabian Islamic influence that has shaped Sharjah, evident in the multifaceted and diverse architectural gems that the city has to offer, spanning various cultures and geographies and a history that goes back millennia, about which more is being discovered every year. Sharjah has an intimate and close relationship to the surrounding environment. From long stretches of gorgeous sandy beaches to the pristine and beautiful desert and wildlife just a drive away, all of which hold pride of place in local Sharjah culture and is an integral part of their lifestyle. The F1 H2O and F4 Grand Prix are run alongside the UIM ABP Aquabike Grand Prix, the Khalid Lagoon transforming into the epicenter of an adrenaline packed weekend of sports, culture, festivities and racing. Fans and locals can get a first-hand experience of the incredible thrill and g-forces of riding in an F1 boat in the F1 H2O two-seater. Now let's take a look at what happened in the previous round. At the Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi in round six, Sean Torrente was atop the world standings going in and was looking to clinch the championship, but Eric Stark took pole position in BRM official qualifying, suddenly increasing his chances at the title. Then Stark had a poor start to the race as his team Abu Dhabi teammate Daniel Kamzi shot into the lead on the first lap with Peter Marin of CTI CF1 Shenzhen China team hot on his tail in second. Eric Stark dropping to third but holding point until lap 29 when his engine let go, forcing Stark to retire and dealing a huge blow to his world title chances in Sharjah. Sammy Celio shot up from 10th to move into 3rd after Stark's exit, with Torrente holding on to 6th after a poor qualifying run, knowing every point counted. Al Kamzi closed out a historic win, the first Abu Dhabi driver to win a home Grand Prix, Peter Marin with his best ever result in runner-up, and Celio back on the podium. Torrente's 6th place finish meant he held a slim 3-point advantage atop the world standings over his teammate Al Kamzi going into Sharjah, with Stark dropping to 3rd and 12 points behind with a maximum 20 points up for grabs at the last Grand Prix, where one of the three teammates would win their first ever world title. It all comes down to the final race, 19 drivers and 9 teams, with each racer wanting to close the season out on a high. This was promising to be the toughest, most competitive race of the year. But only 3 drivers had a shot at the ultimate title, all of whom were on the same team and vying for their first ever world title. Sean Torrente, Daniel Kamzi and Eric Stark. Team manager Guido Capellini is all smiles, the only one on the team who has already won before even knowing the outcome. Fortunately, the stress is not uh, too much, not just because it's the final level world champion, but because the one of my three drivers possible win. Just one of my three. Sean Torrente leads the world standings, but he knows he has no room for error if he's to win that world title that he's come so close to winning season after season over the last 11 years. To win this championship would be a huge deal for me. Um, we've had this conversation for over the last six years, I think, and uh, so to finish it off would be amazing. I've worked really hard, the team's worked really hard. Um, I've made a lot of personal sacrifices this year with time and, and, um, and my training and things like that. that I feel like I'm in the best position ever, so I just can't wait to get out there and get it done. We've been waiting for two days and it's killing me. Daniel 
Kamel Kamzi has been world number two, but has never won the world title after 18 years on the tour, and he knows he may not get many more chances like this. Now he has to take the next step, a very big step, for the world title. We have three boats here, everyone looking for first. He's uh, for me the world champion now uh, almost 17 years. I try it many years. Sometimes you have bad luck, but this year I try it uh, very hard and uh, I want it like, uh, like my wife. Eric Stark is the newest addition to the F1H2O Tour and he's already proven that he's championship material after remarkably starting the year with no team, joining Team Maverick at the last second in round one and then taking the win in round two. His performance caught Guido Capellini's attention and since joining Team Abu Dhabi, he's continued his upward graph with another Grand Prix win and two podiums in 2018. I started with powerboard racing when I was 12 and this, like I, I couldn't even dream about Formula 1. Now I'm like champion for the, fighting for the championship, so you know, it's the, the biggest you can do in power, power boats. So of course, it's, it's, I, want to, I want it this year. The most successful non-Team Abu Dhabi driver of the year has been one of the newest additions to the tour, Peter Marin of CTIC F1 Shenzhen China. His consistent points finish in every race, along with two podium results in 2018, means he could even be on the year-end podium if things go his way in Sharjah. The dark horse that could shake things up here is Team Amoravati's five-time Grand Prix winner Jonas Anderson, always a danger. He had a huge crash in morning practice, but his team have worked hard to get him race ready. Hopefully the boat is okay, it was just small damage and it's repaired, now we're gonna put it in the water and see if the engine is okay, otherwise we put a new one for the qualifying. The Grand Prix of Sharjah Circuit on Khaled Lagoon features five left turns with no right-handers this year, a technical course on flat, sticky water, tough to pass on. The big trick to this race would be prop selection. This course is a little bit tricky for you know for the to decide the start prop because uh, we have a very long and quick course, but then the the length of the start is quite short. So and then it's returning a lot, so you need the power like out from the first boy. So it's difficult to like you know how big you're gonna go or how small. So there's a thousand kind of props. That's the problem. There's a thousand kinds. So you have short, you have medium, you have long. Yes, but you also have how it affects the boat. Um, when you're running in, in, in crappy water compared to good water, compared to crosswind, compared to, you know, just if you're going into it and out of it, there's so many different things on a propeller, how it lifts the back of the boat, how it holds the front of the boat. Today, knowing my situation, I just look for the best handling and best starting propeller. The first step to success is the BRM official qualifying, where the aim is to get a good starting position on the pontoon as 19 drivers battle it out over three sessions for pole position. In Q1, two drivers never made it out on the water, Duarte Benevente of F1 Atlantic team and Ahmed Al Hamili of Victory team. Cedric de Guin had major engine problems as he and his teammate Sutipan Sukbongbong were out in Q1, while Jonas Anderson had a late surge to bump out the struggling Philip Schiaf, who's been plagued with engine issues. The three-time world champion unceremoniously knocked out in Q1, while 12-time Grand Prix winner Francesco Cantando just made it through in 12th position. Also unable to make it into Q2 were Cantando's teammate Simone Schiff and F1 Atlantic driver Grant Trask. In Q2, 12 drivers vied for the six Q3 spots and the racing was intense. Emirates racing driver Bartek Marshalek broke down at the end of Q1 and was unable to get laps in in Q2, while his teammate Moritz Stromoy was unable to find the speed she needed for a repeat Q3 showing. Today has been just a disaster. Now, uh, first, my uh, best engine is, is finished. This second engine is a uh, second slower and uh, now it didn't start. So. Jonas Anderson made the top six, however, while his team Amaravati teammate Eric Eden was out, as was Francesco Cantando. Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi podium placers Peter Marin and Sami Celio were flying out there, continuing their fine form from last round as they finished first and second in Q2 with Eric Stark third. But Stark's teammates Al Kamzi and world standings leader Sean Torrente were struggling. Torrente pulled into the... <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! Oh! 
pontoon while placed precariously in sixth, taking care of a battery issue to get back out there. But just minutes to the end of the session, his teammate Al Kamzi shot up into fifth, bumping Torrente out of the top six. It was already looking like it would be an uphill battle for the American. I don't know what happened. We don't know what happened. Uh, all of a sudden, I was going down the front straightaway, and the dash went blank, and I lost power steering, and uh, I knew there was a big problem. In Q3, six boats left with two laps apiece, and Alex Carella went out first, laying down a good lap time, 46.55. Dani Alcamzi knew the importance of taking pole position, especially with Torrente starting back in seventh, but he was unable to capitalize, making do with a time of 46.63. Jonas Anderson, who just hours ago was literally flying upside down and nearly sinking, went out for a miraculous run and shocked the crowds as he took provisional pole. What a team performance for Team Amaravati. It was, it was what we can do today because we swim this morning and it destroyed the day. So. Eric Stark, who has shown himself to be a master of qualifying, seeking to repeat his pole position performance from Abu Dhabi, was exceptional out there. What a lap time, 45.61. Stark takes provisional pole from Anderson with two drivers left. Sammy Celio was brilliant, but unable to beat Anderson and Stark. And the last man out, Peter Marin, also proved unable to beat Stark's time. Eric Stark takes the pole position for the Grand Prix of Sharjah, his fifth pole position win, and that gives him a huge advantage as his two world title rivals start in sixth and seventh on the pontoon. This was going to be a massive battle. This is amazing. It's, uh, what can I say, like, it's a chance to win the championship, uh, but I can't control it. The only thing I can do is try to win the race, and I'm going to do it, uh, try it at least, and uh, then we see if someone helps me from above. The final qualifying results, Anderson on P2, Celio 3, Peter Marin 4th, then Corella and Al Kamzi in the top 6. The field would be divided by a demarcation buoy at the start between the 6th and 7th positions, adding a further obstacle for Torrente in 7th. The seventh and final race of the year, the Grand Prix of Sharjah, and one of three drivers would win their first ever world title. Defending world champion Alex Carella was starting in fifth. <laughs> it's not the, be the best place today for sure, but okay. First time in the last race I can start in the top five, so I will do my race and uh, that's it. I will try to get a podium today. Yeah. With the world team title already in the bag, team manager Guido Capellini was cool as ice, but for the team Abu Dhabi drivers, nerves were taut, knowing that their biggest rivals out there would be their own teammates. Uh, I was just practicing, practice to start this morning, you know, uh, the speed is, for me, not so important for, for this race. I just need to be first in the first boy and then, you know, try to take it from there. So a lot of starts this morning. Torrente, starting back in seventh and on the wrong side of the demarcation buoy, had the cards stacked against him. Uh, you try to tell yourself it's just another race, right? Same old deal. Um, get a good start, drive good, and, and the rest will take care of itself. So that's what you try to tell yourself anyways. And you keep telling yourself that, and uh, hopefully it'll just start off the dock, and then uh, from there we'll be okay. The starting lineup, Daniel Kamzi in fifth, will have some of the heaviest hitters to get through up to Stark. Corella in fifth, then Marin fourth, Celio in third, and Anderson in P2, a veritable wall of drivers. And behind all that would be Torrente. Brahms up in ninth, Cantando, then Stromoy, Eden all the way down in 15th, and Grant Trask bringing up the rear. It was all on the line and everything to race for out there as final preparations were completed and drivers were ready for the race of their lives. The final moments before the ultimate battle of 2018 begins, the calm before the storm. And it's on, Philip Roms jump starts off the pontoon. Good start from Eric Stark. Next to him is Jonas Anderson. The two Swedes leading the field down the starting straightaway to the commitment buoys as Stark pulls ahead. Cedric Deguin falls behind his teammate Suk Bongbon with Eric Eden also flying past the Frenchman to his starboard. But Jonas Anderson has some incredible speed as the team Amaravati ace edges past Stark, but Stark holding inside lane at... <laughs> Oh, 
advantage for that crucial first turn of the race. Also great starts from Daniel Kamzi and Sean Torrente, who is first to the demarcation buoy. The Swedes leave Sammy Celio behind in third, and then Peter Marin surges past the fin from P4. Stark picks up the pace and reclaims the lead as they enter the turn. Alcamzi brilliant on the outside, now up in third. Torrente also charging up from seventh, trying to pass Celio, who lost positions to Stark and Anderson. Torrente does it, he passes Celio into sixth. But look at Alcamzi, the Emirati driver is going head to head with Anderson. He does it, already moving up into second position, great racing. There's a yellow flag. It's a crash at the back of the field. Sukbang Bang crashes out of the race, and with the first lap not yet completed, that means drivers will revert to their starting positions. All that hard work by Tani Alcamzi and Sean Torrente will be undone. The Thai rookie was unhurt. Here it is on the replay. Sukbang Bang fighting with Eric Eden on that turn. Eden pushes out. The Thai Maverick racer barrel rolls. Here it is from the onboard. Bauer rolls and ends right side up. The race is over for him and it's a yellow flag. The boats go back to the starting grid order, ready for the rolling start, waiting for the green flag. Terrible luck for Alcamzi who had moved up into second. Torrente also back to seventh and he has to do it all again. There's the green flag, the race is back on. Eric Stark out in the lead as the Titan field converges on the buoy. Incredible speed from Jonas Anderson. He's putting the pressure on Eric Stark. Can Anderson catch the race leader? Stark with a very tenuous lead under pressure from his former Team Sweden teammate. Behind them, Sean Torrente back on the warpath as he passes Peter Marin and up ahead on his starboard is Tani Alcamzi, who's also trying to do it all over again as he pushes for the top three. They try and overtake Celio in third on the inside, closing in on the fin. Torrente and Alcamzi both on the outside. Incredible speeds from the two drivers as they show no signs of letting the yellow flag restart bother them. Alcamzi comes around and smokes Sammy Celio and his troubles aren't over as Torrente now swings around on the outside. Celio trying to fend the American off with the inside lane advantage. But Torrente is a man possessed, racing perhaps the most important race of his life. The two go neck and neck in a drag race for fourth position. And there he is on the outside, overhauling Celio, moving into fourth. Great racing from the Team Abu Dhabi drivers. Up from six and seven all the way to three and four after the restart, driving like true champions. Celio bumped back to fifth. Torrente dodges and weaves, looking for a way past the Emirati teammate. But Tani Alcamzi knows he needs to just stay ahead of Torrente and try and put at least one boat between them for a shot at the world title as a two-time Sharjah Grand Prix winner shuts his teammate out in the race of his life. Their only risk now is engine and boat reliability with 44 laps in the race. Philip Roms in seventh position has a near miss with a buoy, swerves into the course, nearly taking out the Emirates racing boats behind him. The light on this side of the course is very tricky with the spray and added factor. Then Roms misses the turn buoy, and that will be an additional penalty on top of the jump start. Amaravati driver Eric Eden is up three positions in 12th, and he makes a move on Bartek Marshalek, who's been struggling since the start. On the next lap, Eden continues his rise, taking down Moritz Stromoy to move into 10th. Having dropped a position in the restart melee, Alex Corella in 6th puts the pressure on Celio in 5th. The victory team driver finding the speed on the outside to slip past Celio in a battle of former multiple world champions. Catching up on Celio is another veteran who's been reaping good results lately, Francesco Cantando, putting the pressure on Celio for sixth. Can Celio hold off the 12-time Grand Prix winner, Cantando? Marin back in eighth, still on track for points in all races this year, and on track to end the year in fourth. Philip Roms in ninth, Eric Eden in the points in the top 10, Marshalek and Stromoy struggling back in 11th and 12th. Cantando's teammate Simone Schuft of Germany is looking to complete her third race in a row and even add some more points to Blaze Performance team. Meanwhile, drama in a battle for ninth as two youngsters battle it out. Eric Eden slips past Philip Roms. The Swedes steadily climbing up from 15th, gaining six positions, seeking to add points for Amaravati in the team standing. <laughs>
Meanwhile, last year's Sharjah Grand Prix runner-up Jonas Anderson keeps up the pressure on Eric Stark, but Stark is racing flawlessly, holding the Swede off lap after lap. Behind him is Daniel Kamsi, who knows if he could pass Anderson and put a boat between him and Torrente, he could win the world title here. But then the unthinkable happens. Daniel Kamsi comes to a grinding halt as Torrente flies past the struggling Emirati. What a cruel blow to Al Kamsi's chances. It's all over. His hopes for the world title vanish. Shock and despair for him and his local supporters. Engine, what happened? What I can see? That means Torrente is now headed for the world title up in third. Even if Stark wins this, Torrente is the world champion, but he still has to finish the race and avoid any technical mishaps. Behind Torrente, Alex Carrella moves up into fourth, just one step from a long overdue podium finish. But it was not to be. Corella fails to finish a sixth race in a row, and there has to be some soul searching now for Victory Team ahead of 2019. The top three remains Stark, Anderson, and Torrente. Torrente now sensing he's closer than ever to his first ever world title. Australian F1 Atlantic driver Grant Trask has proven he can race with the best of them in F1 H2O, but he's had a tough year. Still, he's aiming to climb as high up into the top 10 here as he can. Lap 28, the first DNF for Peter Marin all year, bringing a tough race to a premature end, but he's still on track for a year-end fourth position finish. With just nine laps left in the race, Torrente knows he just needs to finish on point for a happy ending, but he still has the likes of Celio and Cantando on his tail. Out comfortably in the lead, despite Anderson's pressure, Stark on track for his third Grand Prix win of the year, but it must be bittersweet for him, and that DNF in Abu Dhabi will surely be weighing on him, wondering what might have been. Bad luck for Cantando. His run of good results ends here. The final laps now, Stark is holding Anderson off. There it is, Eric Stark, the Grand Prix of Sharjah winner, and Sean Torrente is the new 2018 UIM F1H2O world champion. What a result, and what a way to cap off a year for Team Abu Dhabi, who have towered head and shoulders over the season. Torrente celebrates in style. It's been a long time coming. There's been a lot of frustration and hard work to get there, and he's finally done it. That was my wife. That was my wife. A well-deserved world title for the man from Miami. Perfect race for Eric Stark and great finish for runner-up Jonas Anderson. He congratulates Stark after a hard-fought battle. Celio is fourth. Great result for Eden in fifth, up from 15th. Shiap seventh. Cedric de Guin gets two points for Maverick in ninth. Emirates Racing Team's Marshalek and Stromoy unable to finish the race. Torrente, world champion with 89 points. Stark, world runner-up on 85. Alkamzi, world number three on 74. Morin finishes fourth, Shiap fifth, and Stromoy sixth. There's the victory lap for the new UIM F1 H2O world champion, Sean Torrente, and what a result and season for his crew at Team Abu Dhabi. Had a really good start, got clean on the outside and got by Corella, and then Sammy got covered up by Tani, and I had a run on him on the front, he held it, and then going down that way, I just, man, I just let it hang out there and just gave it all it had, I knew it was the race. And I got by him somehow, it didn't blow over, and got to the next corner, covered him up, and I knew I was in, at least I was in position to win the world championship at that point. In the team championship results, the points proved crucial for Amaravati, who end the year in third behind runners-up, CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team, and of course, on top, Team Abu Dhabi. It's a mixed feeling, it's a mixed feeling. I'm happy for Sean, I'm happy for the team. Uh, I did, a f I think, what, everything I could today. Uh, we had some bad luck in, uh, in Abu Dhabi, and in Portugal I was not in the team, so I, had, I think uh, since I joined Abu Dhabi, I, ju I did a good job, and, uh, and I, I hope I can stay with them for next year. I had a setup to try to beat Eric in the start. I almost did it. We were side by side, and I could not overtake him, so it is what it is. I'm very happy because my sponsor is here, and uh, so it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Today in 
the race. Uh, this is the luck. Uh, thank you, the God. He gave me this my position. I'm very happy today, and uh, we try next year. Uh, we do all the best. The team of the year, Team Abu Dhabi. The end of a fairy tale season with a world team title, the world driver title, and the year end podium lockdown. Every year we do this interview and we say, you know what, maybe next year we had a great year. But this year we say it's this year, 2018 world champion. Um, no one can ever take that away. Thanks to my team here at the race, thanks to my team at home, and my grandfather also looking down on us. So thank you for everything. I love you guys and thank you for all the support of Abu Dhabi. Really, they support us so much. And uh, we test tomorrow morning at 7 for next year. <laughs> Sharjah celebrates the close of another incredible season with a lavish feast to top off the seventh and final Grand Prix of 2018. That brings to a close a spectacular season for the UIM F1H2O World Powerboat Championship. See you in 2019.